would you want smaller breasts? You should take the extra and give yourself a bigger ass. You should take the extra and give it to me. What size are they? I have been so excited to grow breasts, to develop the feminine curves that, fast, that would mark me a woman. And then I got them. I was thrilled to trade up from a training bra to a C cup at 10. Felt all grown up when I was a D at 14. During high school, they continued to grow and grow. Bras started to fit weird and chafe if I ran without layering two sports bras together. Nickname started. Dolly Parton from my rugby teammates. Big Titty from a truly creative group of boys at homecoming. <laughs> the attention I'd been relishing since I was 14 started to become a burden to me. It was when I was 18 that I was with, on vacation with my family that I was properly sized for the first time. Zoe & Co. in Westerly, Rhode Island is a warm and welcoming lingerie wonderland with bras in every style and material imaginable. The most amazing part, everything came in sizes I could wear. The women who worked at the store were professional, easy to talk to, and made me feel comfortable right away. It was a far cry from getting fitted at Macy's where the women could have been an extra on murder, she wrote, and bathed in noxious perfume. I left the shop with a collection of bras that lifted and separated in a way none before ever had. I could stand up straight, roll my shoulders back, and feel no back pain. Muscles I didn't even realize were tense were finally able to relax. I walked in thinking I was a 42 double D and walked out knowing I was really a 36 K. K isn't as big as it sounds. At least they never felt as big as K sounds to me. Sure, anytime I stained a shirt, the spot that got it the worst was my chest area. And a few times a day, I would subconsciously cross my arms under my breasts and enjoy the pressure being taken off my shoulders. But K's not that big. Okay, they were uncomfortable. The great bras I had dug into my shoulders, and if I wore something more comfortable, my back ached instead. My breasts either vetoed every top I tried on or made me look like I was intentionally spilling out and flaunting my decolletage. I am kind of a pervert, though. I enjoy a raunchy sense of humor, and I talk about sex and sexuality all the time. So my larger-than-life breasts just seem like part of the package. All right, damn, K is fucking huge. They seemed to define me. People would fixate on them, their eyes stopping and widening a little. I would be motorboated by strangers, felt up without permission, played like bongo drums. All in good fun, but it wasn't the kind of attention that I actually wanted. What 20-year-old girl wants her body to be the butt of a joke? And while I laughed along, it increasingly got under my skin, and it felt like my breasts were the only thing people noticed. When it came to sex, it felt like if the men and women I slept with enjoyed my breasts too much, it was almost a fetish on their part. I wanted to be wanted in spite of them, not because of them. I wanted people to be grossed out a little. My breasts felt twice as old as the rest of me, and I checked the mirror to see if I was developing a hump in my back from stooping. But what alternative did I have? This was the body I was stuck with. I worried that losing a drastic amount of weight would leave me with saggy or deflated flesh because the sheer weight of my fibrous mammaries had stretched the skin so much already. I was terrified of having loose change in tube socks boobs. <laughs> the answer arrived when I stumbled across a BBC documentary on breast reductions. I watched as the process unfolded, as well as the surgery itself. These girls were my age, and my breasts were much larger. I needed it at least as much as they did. And along with the reduction, I would get a lift as well. No saggy skin. I went to my doctor as soon as I could and asked for a referral. In a matter of days, I had my first appointment with a plastic surgeon. Now, I am not the cosmetic surgery type. 
I appreciate natural beauty. I don't even like wearing makeup every day. So when I looked around the plastic surgery waiting room at healing facelifts and gauze wrapped noses, I felt really out of place. It was a relief to be shown into the exam room. I took off my shirt in the sterile space and replaced it with a thin paper one, open in the front. I was poked and prodded while I answered a battery of questions. What size was I? Why did I want the procedure? Did I understand the risks? The doctor was professional and brief. I could have thick, ropey scars called keloids. I could lose sensitivity in one or both of my nipples. If there were complications, I could lose the nipples themselves, but that was very rare. I could have a negative reaction to the anesthesia. The list went on, but the possibility of a statistically ne improbable negative outcome compared to the certainty of life with the breasts I had made the choice easy. And fuck it, I already felt like a member of the freak show. So if I ended up with hideously scarred or deformed breasts, at least it would be my choice. I could deal with the fallout if things went wrong, and I would reap all the benefits if things went right. A week and a half later, I got the call. My insurance would cover almost all of it because there was a legitimate medical need. This was really happening. My life was about to change. The months flew by and the day of the surgery arrived. I put on my hospital gown and sat in a bed. The doctor came in with his special marker to draw the incision lines on my body. He drew the circles where my nipples would be moved up to, drew triangles on the underside of my breasts where the skin would be cut away. We discussed how the procedure and recovery would go. I was a jumble of excitement and nerves and was relieved when the anesthesia kicked in. Smart doctors. In a rosy haze, counting back from 10, I reassured myself, this will all be worth it. The surgery went great. The doctor said they took as much as they could. That ended up being two and a half pounds from each breast. I lost five pounds in four hours. <laughs> I needed to see what they looked like. My skin felt hot and tight. The incisions were red and dark, like someone had drawn on me with a Sharpie. Their shape was top heavy and unnatural because my skin needed time to stretch. But none of that mattered. Scars and shape and pain didn't matter. I was so much lighter. My arms had more space to move. It was easier to breathe. Easier to lie flat without my breasts reaching my chin. It was freeing. I was lucky to be young, to have excellent medical coverage. None of the worst case scenarios happened. I lost some sensation, and my nipples have some uneven scars from incisions that healed at different rates. But the only time I really walk around topless in front of other people is when I'm sleeping with a woman, and then I'm aroused and my nipples are puckered, and you can't really tell anyway. <laughs> and thankfully, I rarely have sex in a headstand position. <laughs> so the majority of the scars are almost never visible. No one notices, no one asks. In the last seven years, my body has righted itself. My breasts have a natural shape, and the scars have faded. I'm still voluptuous and busty. My breasts feel perky for their size and age appropriate. I get to choose to flaunt them or not. They feel like they fit my body now. I never get jokes about suffocating people or my breasts having a gravitational pull. <laughs> Occasionally, I still get motorboated by inebriated assholes. <laughs> So not everything has changed. In the end, it was totally worth it.